What's up everyone, ADS Play 101 here, and welcome to my review of Horizon Forbidden, Forbidden West. Um, I just finished beating the main story uh, yesterday, and one of my files where I was actually giving my review of the game um, didn't catch my voice too well, so I figured I'll just redo it and uh, maybe cover some things that I missed in the original video anyway. Now, this isn't a traditional review of me going over, say, like the storyline and et cetera, et cetera, as much as me just pointing out what I liked about the game, what I didn't like about it, and, you know, just going off of that. I'll let you pick your own rating for whatever you want to rate it for, but I'm just giving my opinions on what I liked about the game and what I didn't like about it. Honestly, you know, like we don't cut no corners. We don't sugarcoat nothing here. So first off, I do, with this game, they really did a good job with continuing the story from the previous game. You know, we've had sequels in the past. I don't want to say which one. You know, people get sensitive about the games that they like. Where the sequel had nothing to do with the, with the prequel. You know, so... I'm glad that they did that right. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was a good transition. And, and with the ending that we got, it seems like there's going to be a third game. Uh, maybe they'll call it Horizon Forbidden West. I mean, not, not Horizon Forbidden West, but Horizon 3 Brave New World, because they did mention something about a Brave New World. Um, maybe they'll call it... Uh, Horizon 3 Outer Limits or something like that. I don't know. But there is a third game. Seem like it's coming uh, within the next one or two years. We we'll probably hear about it. But I like, I love the environment uh, and the variety of machines that you can control. Especially the Sun Wings, which is basically like robotic pterodactyls. You know, because that's the setting that this game is in. It's in like a a technological prehistoric era, if that makes any sense. You know, like it's, uh, you know, those sun wings come in handy, especially when you got to get on top of the tall necks, which are basically the giraffes. Um, Cause those are like, if you ever played Assassin's Creed or anything like that, when you reach the top of the, uh, uh, like the churches or the towers, and it gives you like a, a big scope of the landscape and it reveals the map. That's what the tall necks are for. And normally you would have to find ways to climb on top of the tall necks. Maybe you have to create, uh, you know, maybe solve like a puzzle or something, uh, climb an obstacle in order to get high enough to jump on top of the tall neck so you can climb on top of it. But when you get the sun wing, it, you know, it allows you to ride a flying machine so that way you could just land on top of them and just get a, uh, and just reveal the map. Um, also, you know, I, I, I'm always like a sucker for game that gives post game content. This game has a lot of it. So all these little gray areas right here, you do see a lot of un, uh, you see, you do see a lot of. Um, uncharted areas so it does give you a lot to explore not on, on top of that if you want to go back and you want to say you want to get every item you know you can do it as well there were some relics that, I, that you can pick up in the ruins I don't know what they're for I don't know what they go towards but they may go towards maybe like a special armor or something like that. So that's something to look forward to to see what that is. Um, it's, it's one in every ruin to my knowledge. So it'd be good to go check that out and see how that works. Uh, on top of that, there's the cauldrons. Let's, let's see. There's one, two. I think there was one over here. Three. There's three cauldrons so far that I have not explored. So, again, going right back to the replayability, 
it's always good to get a game that gives you that because you're getting more bang for your buck, I feel. Uh, you know, these open world games do that so much. The sandbox style games, excuse me, they do that so much. But on top of that, they took Aloy's skills and they broke them down into six different skill trees. So if you want to be more of like a hands-on fighter, there's the warrior skill tree. If you want to focus more on traps, you have the trapper. If you want to focus more on long-range weapons, you have the hunter one. If you want to focus on being able to, to gather more resources from your uh, from the environment, the survivor. You want to play more stealthy, the infiltrator. You want to focus on the machines more, you have the machine master. So I'm I'm good that they added, I'm glad that they added a variety right there to let you focus on how you want to play the game. So that's a plus for me. Uh, on top of that, you know, of course you do. They did give her more outfits than um, than the previous game, or rather, some new outfits. Excuse me, I can't really say more because I didn't get all of them in the last game. I got the best out. You know, I got the best armor in that game, and I kind of just ignored the rest. <laughs> rest of them. Once you got the best, why, why worry about the rest, right? But this game has a, a very good selection, and I, I, I like the design of them. That's the one thing I do appreciate. I like the design of them. Some of them are kind of simple, kind of like this Oseron Forester, and then some of them looks more, you know what I'm saying, more war-ready. Like the Technoth Marshal outfits, or the Vindicators, you know. Or even a recon, you know, they look more intimidating. You got the marshals. You know, we even got one called the Carja Shadow, which is good. And an another thing is that every one of these are kind of customizable with the colors. They have different flowers you can pick up throughout the game that uh, gives you access to certain dyes. Now, of course, you have to find someone who can do the dyes in the settlements, but it gives you options to. Uh, you know, to change the color of the outfit if you want to. Maybe you don't like it being red. Maybe you want to change it to black. Maybe if you don't like it being green, you can change it to blue, etc. So to give that type of variety, you know, that's always appreciated. Um, the characters in the story, you know, Varl, he came back. Um, Zoe, who was a new face. Uh, who had a relationship with with Varl and and you know they did they thing. Uh, Aaron, you know he's back in the game. We got Katalo, who is a marshal from one of the uh, tribes, and uh, as well as several other people. I'm trying not to spoil the game too much, but. Uh, you know, they do give you some good backstories on where these characters come from and who they are and the relationships that they develop with each other and with Aloy. You know, even the return of Silence, you know, he was in the last game. Um, he plays a good role towards the end of the game, as well as like the Xenus, who are the main antagonists. Uh, but you don't find that out until later. And the game seems to be going in a, it seems, it almost seems as if they're going from this primitive machine state to where they possibly could be going into outer space in the next game. And that kind of just, you know, that, that kind of, cause you know, there's a threat coming and Aloy may, may have to take a means in order to get in outer space in order to stop that threat. So... If you guys seen the playthrough, you know what the threat is. But there are also some things about this game that I don't like. You know, first of all, and this is going to spoil it a little bit, with Varl, you know, uh, there are some characters in this game, such as Varl, who I feel like don't get enough side quests as much as the other characters do. Like, I felt like they could have did more with Varl. And I, I feel like they kind of missed it on that note. You know, 
um, I'm pretty sure uh, what happened to him is going to hopefully it plays a role in the future you know for some character development or something because I, I kind of hated the way they utilized Varl in this game he he was he was Aloy's friend and things like that but it's like you kind of still wanted to have more side quests with him or something like that you know so I feel like they kind of dropped the ball with that on top of that and even though it's not a that big of a deal um I, I understand we're living in an era where, and y'all get on my head if y'all don't like what I say, but I, I understand we're living in an era of, you know, the uh, of the alphabet people, we just gonna call them that. But the placement of certain references to that community is kind of cringe and it felt like it was like unnecessary. It's kind of like, if any, if anybody that's seen the anime Fire Force, you know Fire Force had a lot of unnecessary fan service in that in those first two seasons. That kind of ruined, damn near ruined the anime for some people, including myself. Because the anime itself was so good that why would you need to put this useless fan service in there? And in a sense, seeing LGBT references in this game even though it's only like two of them, to be honest with you, it's like they just threw them in there just because. You know what I mean? Like, they don't have no actual placement. They don't make no sense from the last game. They don't make no sense in this game. They literally just threw them in there. So, in this game, as you see with Aloy's face, there's face paints that you can get. You can unlock different face paints, but it's only like a couple places in the game where you can actually apply them and, you know, give Aloy like a different look. And one of the face paints have the uh the lgbt flag on you know the the rainbow flag of on one side of her face she has the trans flag on another side of her face and a pansexual flag on the top of her head on top of her forehead and it's just like where did this come from you know what i mean with the aesthetic of the game you know what i mean for them to just throw that in there it just didn't make no sense it's like you're trying too hard to appease a certain crowd and it's just like out of no damn where this is what you know what I mean? So it was just unnecessary. I felt like they just like they're doing too much to try to please, try to appease a crowd. Like they didn't want to leave out that for whatever reason. It just didn't make any sense for it to be in the game. But that's just my new. Another thing, even though I I like the variety of weapons and uh, the even though I like the um. I don't think plasma was in the last game. I kind of like the plasma element that they put in the game and purge. I don't think purge was in the last game, was it? I think in the last game, all they had was fire, electricity, acid, and I guess explosions. I think plasma, the, the shield trip caster, you know, those things, I actually like those elements being added. Uh, as well as the new coils, like the new coils to upgrade your outfit. They got some pretty cool coils in here. Um, and, you know, it, it's just good to see some new stuff in here. But it does get to a point where it feels kind of wash, rinse, repeat. Because once you get the hang of what you need to do, it's just like, you know, okay, it's the same old thing. Now, I can be honest with you, the intensity of the battles kind of like alleviates that because you're, you're focused so hard on not trying to get hit because the concentration that you get when you have to, you know, when you get a chance to slow down everything around you, it helps. But some of those machines are still moving fast to where if you're not paying attention, they can still get you, you know, even with the slowdown. But... The combat does get repetitive, you know, it's, uh, you know, you shooting off, you know, you scanning them, uh, you shooting off their weapons, using their weapons against them, um, in order to inflict higher amounts of damage, you being able to tear off components in order to make them weaker, uh, hitting weak spots, 
in order to take them down faster, you know, it it, it kind of gets repetitive. But like I said, the the intensity of those fights actually alleviate that. So that's kind of a good thing. But on top of that, Aloy has a new device. A shield wing that she took off of one of the one of the marshals. And uh it's good for a parachute. I kind of wish they kind of let you use it as a shield, which is what the marshal was using it for. And I'm kind of disappointed they didn't give us that feature. I mean, I understand they gave us a trap wire where they basically allows you to create a shield. But it would have been nice if she already has it on her arm. Why does she need to deploy it on the ground? You know, I understand she wants to be a maneuverable person. But, you know what I mean? It's one of those things that just didn't make any sense to me. Like, if the, if the guy that she got the shield off of was using it as a shield, why is she... I mean, it's innovative that she's using it as a parachute, but at the same time, like, how come she can't use it as a shield? That didn't make any sense to me. Um, on top of that, I wish I would have seen more of a variety, more weapons. Like, for example, maybe like a sword um, or maybe some daggers or something like that. Because you see the other characters, you know, they, they use war clubs and hammers and, uh, you know, spears, of course, which Aloy does have and bows. But it honestly would have been cool to see her with a sword or maybe some daggers. You know what I'm saying? Just to give us a variety of combat. Because eventually swinging this around is going to get tired, tiresome. And, and, and you would like a different way to attack. Even though they kind of gave you combos and things to upgrade from your, from your skill tree. But it still would have been nice to get another weapon to use. You know what I mean? So... I thought that would have that was a missed opportunity there. Um, on top of that, I do like the variety of machines, like the new machines that they put. Again, like the Sunwing, the ability to fly in this game is, you know, that, that that's so underappreciated in games like this. I feel like you know, just having to, especially going from the first game, having to. Because I don't think you could fly in the first game. I, I don't remember you being able to do that. I think there were like a couple flying enemies, but you couldn't uh, control them. Like you couldn't control them. I could be wrong. Because like I said, I, I didn't dive into the first game as much as I did this one. So I could be wrong about that. But I don't remember being able to fly in the first game. And in this game, they give you the option to do it with the sun wings. And it's invaluable i mean anytime you're able to fly in a sandbox style game like this it's always going to be you know i said undervalued but i meant invaluable uh excuse my lingo but it's always going to be appreciated you know because the ability to just get into places where normally you would have to find ways to climb in there and it could be a headache at times um you know, there was even one instance where I remember I was trying to rescue some people that were on the side of a cliff and I had to get this crane to move down. Now there's this this flower kind of that kind of grows out of the side of walls called like fire gleam. And you it's an upgrade that you get just from playing the story where she shoves her spear into the fire gleam charges it charges it up and it basically becomes like a almost like a bomb and it blows up the wall and now she has access to get to wherever she needs to get to or the access to be able to move big objects it was a time it was one instance where i had to move a crane like a like, like an old world crane uh in order to make a makeshift bridge and the game didn't even let you know that there was like, I don't, I don't remember the game telling me that there was anything 
that has to do with a fire gleam because from what I remember they they don't show up on the scan so even if you're looking around trying to find out what the problem is you know you can't really see it so you would never think oh I gotta jump in the water get this fire gleam charge up so it can you know blow up now the crane can move etc but it was only one instance like that so it's not that big of a deal um, and on top of that it was on a side quest so that was another thing An another one and I, I if I remember correctly there was a few spots that had some frost gleam in it something called frost gleam and I didn't see any upgrade maybe I passed it or something like that but they didn't even use it in the main story I would have thought maybe they would have put that in the main story or something like that but I did see a blue flower growing out of a wall called a frost gleam and they didn't even put that that like, like I only see it in one area and I can't even remember where I seen it at but it was only one frost gleam uh, flower that I that I remember seeing somewhere now of course if I would have did more of the side content or explored the game more maybe I would have came across it more often but I only seen it once and I I kind of wish they, that would have played into the main storyline more often than as you know as much as the fire gleam did so that was kind of a missed opportunity um, I'm trying to think what else I'm missing here I mean I pretty much touched everything that I needed to speak on uh, the game in spite of my opinions about you know everything that I complained about uh, or, or my gripes you know the game is still pretty pretty cool I mean the concept of it is 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 crazy how the world had this post-apocalyptic event or it had this cataclysmic event that caused uh a mass extinction of modern society and it's kind of like technology took the place of of, of animals that's kind of like a crazy you know it's almost going back to the world in a primitive sense and excuse me is going back to a primitive aesthetic while using advanced technology to to recreate this these these creatures you know like alligators and wolves and tyrannosaurus you know what I'm saying it's wild but I definitely enjoyed the storyline. I, I enjoyed the game. I like the fact they have so much content and there's still so much more to explore in the game as well. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out whenever I get the time to. Um, hopefully we hear about some DLC because I feel like there's some things that they still could have did with the game that they didn't do. Even though I doubt we're going to get any DLC because the game really doesn't. It's one of those situations where the game doesn't need any DLC, but it kind of feels like we're still going to get some. So. Maybe they'll unlock some of these other dark areas right here and add to it, add to it. Um, but, but only time will tell, you know, but if it's anything like the last game that, you know, we'll end up getting DLC. Because, uh. I still see, you know, for example, that, that there's a lot of a lot of black space on this map where I literally feel like they could have did more with this space and they probably will again with the DLC if they add it. So, I definitely want to give the team that created this game a salute cuz they did a good job. Um outside of the few things that I may have complained about but yeah so that was my take on Horizon 2 Forbidden West um, it was good to see the environments like 
old world San Francisco uh, being rusted out. You know, like you even seen the Golden Gate Bridge in the game. Um, I don't think he was even able to cross it, but it definitely was a, a cool, like you even seen old world Las Vegas. Uh, you know, like they just did a good job with it. And I'm, I'm definitely not... disappointed too much by what I got so I'm wondering what side quest this is there's probably some post game content right here that I'm thinking about but I appreciate it so Ladies and gentlemen, that was my take on Horizon 2 Forbidden West. I hope you guys enjoyed it if you played it yourself. And uh, we'll see what the game holds for the future. But until then, remember, be humble in victory, be gracious in defeat, but show no mercy in battle. World Warriors Collective.